I have to admit I, I feel uh, a lot of sympathy for you because I, I believe genuinely that you are aware that the situation is serious. And uh, I have to admit at the same time that I do not share many of your views. I agree with you that fiscal consolidation, curbing of public expenditure and financial rigour are necessary because markets are very sensitive and markets at the moment do not forgive any mistake. But, however, good intentions are not enough. Let's make one thing clear. The euro currency was imposed on states of different development, different purchasing power, different GDP per capita, different living standards, different budgeting, different level of competitiveness. And it was done purely for political and ideological reasons, because Euro should have served as a tool for further integration, not primarily as a single currency per se. Yes, yes, that's true, that's true. Yeah. No, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. Then it came public overspending, lack of discipline, and this directed some states to a verge of collapse. An enormous situation in such a time, states would devaluate its currency to cope with th those consequences. But of course, as members of the Eurozone, they cannot do that because they are not allowed to do that. So the only solution remaining are first bailouts, more bailouts, and even more bailouts, however you can call them. And secondly, transition of monetary union into a fiscal union, and thus, most importantly, the debt union. The logic of the first step, the bailout step, is that debts of ones will be paid by the others. And the second step will mean further shift uh, of national power to European level and further diminishing of the role of member states. Mr. Verhofstadt might like it. I very much doubt that most members of his own group like it that much as he does. But again, the most important thing is whether people of Europe like it and whether it will help to promote more pro-European thinking amongst European nations. If you think that it does, you're wrong, ladies and gentlemen, you're wrong. I can tell you, in my own country, last poll, a recent poll has shown that 75% of people are against joining the euro. And do you really think that this is a result of some anti-European propaganda? No, no, it is not a result of anti-European propaganda. It is just a result of people that see and think. And they simply do not anymore buy this idea of federal Europe. That's very simple. I ask you, Mr. President, I ask you frankly, do you concede that it may come to a situation when, a, as the only solution of the current problems, it might come to a situation when one or more of the Eurozone members would have to leave the monetary union or not? And secondly, would you admit, would you admit that some other still non-Eurozone members could reevaluate their uh, thoughts about joining the Eurozone or not? And please don't get me wrong. If it comes to that, this, in my feeling, will not mean the fall of the euro, because none of us wishes that, but the mentality of euro for all costs, this is just the way which can destroy the euro. I understand that if it comes to a reduction of the eurozone, that might be a political disaster, political disaster for those who invested a great deal of their political capital into that idea, into the idea of United States of Europe. But this is their problem. This is their problem that they did that. Mr. President, I can agree with you when you stress the necessity to reinforce competitiveness, to complete single markets, to improve legal background. <laughs> Believe me, you achieve none of these things within old and outdated EU framework. Mr. Schuman, Mr. Monet, undoubtedly they were nice guys, but their ideas are 50 years over. So please, let's stop thinking in these terms. Because now, because now, Mr. President, now, Mr. President, unfortunately, 
now mr president unfortunately for you you have almost no choice between bad decisions and even worse decisions. for instance another worse decision you came with you have just mentioned is the financial transaction tax because it sounds fine for the first look just a small fee of transactions in the real world such a tax will lead to only one conclusion that states and institutions will seriously reconsider their location and they will leave the european market and this will undermine further the european economy it's very simple mr president we need a new eu paradigm for the 21st century unfortunately i have to say that this is a very little chance almost no chance that this new paradigm is to be born in this very building in this very assembly ladies and gentlemen the longer i am here the more i feel that this assembly is more a part of the problem than a part of the solution and i am i am sorry to say that i am sorry for you mr president by the way but anyway i wish you good luck thank you very much well done.